you know, niche political issue, like red pill stuff was really huge a few years ago with the Tates and everything. And now that's kind of like slid a bit, a lot in popularity. And, yeah, yeah. Do you think that that stuff's a bit done? Because I kind of look at some of those podcasts where you see like, you know, like whatever podcast and all that. I think mm-hmm. you've done that, right? Yeah. But you'll kind of see and you'll be like, oh, that, that thing kind of feels like it came and went. And then you go look at the thing and you're like, no, they still do like crazy views. They Someone's do okay watching. views. But like there were a lot of those types of shows and figures, gurus and stuff like popping up. But I feel like the only ones that are really going still are whatever does okay but they also have branched out too they've got like a lot of daily wire people that make the rotation on that show Mm. like they've gotten dave rubin on and stuff and then fresh and fit are still going but like i feel like pearl has largely dropped off just pearly things in london i feel like all of the other shows that had kind of like bubbled over a little bit have kind of like gone that way and like the tates are away from dude it must be like really depressing to run like an unsuccessful one of those shows where you have to like bring a panel of girls on and you're like you guys and it's like <laughs> 10 people are watching yeah, i mean you also you do that every day and oh, it's like, hard. Right, it's... so the only reason they probably go on is because it like pumps their only fans right yeah like, for a lot of the girls yeah they get a lot of subscriptions <laughs> and stuff off that yeah and it's you know you, the, they get good sound bites but i mean i remember like a year ago when whatever they got some big write-up in like the new york times or wall street journal or something i remember you would go and they would get they were getting like thirty thousand people live and i think it's definitely a fraction of that now it's like a few thousand now isn't it I, it's something Maybe. But I remember being like, damn, 30,000 people watching this live right now. That was, Do you uh, not think there's any utility for guys in some of that stuff? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's what, here, what I would, why I kind of think sometimes, sometimes you'll have like a friend that is like just like terrible with women. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And sometimes they almost need someone to shake it up to be like, dude, like stop being a like no one's gonna help you you need to get your shit together and then Mm -hmm. once that happens they probably don't need that message every single day but sometimes people do need like a shake up to you know what I mean I can agree with you in principle like the old pickup artist communities or the old like prior to Andrew Tate red pill stuff uh, I think there was some value there even if a lot of it was just like like a brain shift sometimes kind of well a lot of it was like phrased very misogynistically but there were like elements of truth to everything that was being talked about so for instance psychology um, yeah like if you're talking to a girl like ignore the bitch, like wait a day before you respond to make her want you because women need guys blah blah, blah. and it's like always phrased really poorly but like if you're a type of guy that's ultra f-ing clingy and you are texting women too much but having an artificial timer like i'm not going to respond to this text for six hours might actually help you for a sure. lot it 100%. might but nowadays the red pill is like cheat on your girlfriend and she'll love you even more now it's like <laughs> it's, it's a it. whole other <laughs> world of yeah. detached from well, reality i guess you run out you can't just say the same thing you have to keep pushing yeah, yeah. But that, that's a hypothesis you test one time yeah. and you go yeah that didn't work but i'm saying that like the old stuff or however misogynist you wanted to call it which it was at least there were a lot of elements of that like if you followed it even if it kind of made you a shitty person it worked i don't think the current stuff works that's why i think the shelf life on it was so yeah. short because like a, like there's never been a period ever in the history of the entire united states where a girl is sitting across from a guy at dinner and she sees he's got like andrew tate on his phone and she's like oh yes a real man for me <laughs> Finally, like that's never happened. Yeah, probably not. And I mean, it was just a bunch. You know, none of those Miami bitches are into that. You're on that. They might be, but <laughs> they're not looking for love. They're looking for money. Well, that's, that's what I mean. Totally different thing. They yeah. want to hang out on a boat. You're right. Yeah. They might not say real man, but they might say this guy might buy me a purse. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Or a bracelet. Yeah. Or something. Yeah. Yeah. They just love boats. I feel like because <laughs> then there was that, and then the sort of there was also sort of the I guess like Daily Wire sort of. Uh, what do they call it? like traditional conservative sort of movement? There was some fighting there, yeah. The trad cons versus the red pills. Yeah, yeah. I was kind of thinking that even because I saw like Fresh and Fit had some drama with like a uh, guy got a girl pregnant. Steven Crowder has his big like divorce thing right now, mm-hmm. and it was kind of it almost feels to me a little bit like for like left wing people, the twenties are their most like puritanical, and then they have to like get jobs and all that stuff. But for for like right wing people, it's almost thirties are sort of the most puritanical because you're sort of like, all right, you got to have a family, but. It's all, they're all just starting this stuff. They have like a three year old kid, like they're just four years into marriage. And then, then maybe your kid turns out to go to jail. Then you get divorced from your wife. And, you know, half the people, real life happens and no one's perfect. So it's harder sell as, you know, you kind of get older and mm-hmm. life happens and, and there wish, is no perfect answer. Yeah. And it's like, it's so cringy because people are making decisions. Um, People are are making like financial and familial and relationship decisions like politically. And I'm like, life is so much more. What do you mean by that? Okay, I'm not calling anybody out. If you think I'm talking about you, I'm not, okay? But um, (laughs) I just had a conversation with a friend recently and they're like, oh yeah, like I've been struggling and I'm trying to like buy a house or whatever. And I'm like, oh, well, why are you trying to buy a house? Like, I know this person, it seems like they're kind of like mobile or whatever. And like, oh, well, I feel like the gap between homeowners and renters is growing. (laughs) And I'm like, okay, hold on, all right? There's a lot of good reason. I don't, I'm a millionaire. I don't own a house, okay? 
that. Okay, you don't, there's a lot of good reasons not to own a house. You don't have to buy a house because of some, and, I, and through talking to them, they might just give it, I felt like a very politically driven decision, like, oh, like buying a house is important because I don't want to be a rentoid forever and it's a bad thing to rent. And I'm like, there's, I mean, there's a lot of bad things about homes too. Like there's pros and cons to everything. The if you want to buy a house, then buy a house. You get a lot of freedom to have a house. You can stay in one area for a long time. You can, you know, landlord but also if the roof might or the foundation might complicate your relationship yeah there's a lot of stuff that goes on you can't move for five years unless you want to lose a ton of money you don't have any liquidity in the house even though people say you're building value but i'm just saying that like that's a financial decision don't make it politically people do the same with relationships where it's like oh well like i don't know if i can date this girl like she's got like four bodies and she's 26 and i heard that like if a girl has four bodies the studies say that there's a 45 <laughs> yeah. percent and it's like what the that's young you. retard shit, though. Yeah, I'm like, I feel like you don't need to make decisions based on your political orientation. Like, parts of things that play into your politics are going to play into your personal decisions. So, for instance, like, a, a conservative is more likely to be Christian, or a Christian more likely to be conservative, so being Christian might influence your relationship choices. But don't make relationship choices based on your fucking political outlook. That's crazy. But that, some of that's just, like, young, like, idealism. Like, dude, every 14-year-old's like, yeah, I want to marry a 10 that's this and this, and you're like, sure. the same as girls, you know, kind of a lot, I feel like a lot of dudes on the internet get mad at the girls that are just like i need a guy that makes eight figures and this and that you're like that's not who she actually dates yeah <laughs> she yeah, dates yeah. Like she, some she says and then she waits around for two years and goes all right turns out that's not enough <laughs> yeah so i'm not getting that yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah i just yeah the everything being so political is like brain rotted people on everything so like even yeah and then like you said before like relationships are complicated like a lot like and is, life is yeah and it's hard to tell you know it's funny because like i was in a um, prior to this i had a marriage i'm divorced now it was an open marriage so a lot of people were saying that like oh well if you're, when your marriage ends it's going to be because it was an open marriage it's like i've had normal relationships and no nope, it wasn't because they were closed marriages or like steven crowder and his wife are having like the most brutal fucking online fight of the world nobody says it's because they were christian or heterosexual or whatever uh like relationships are complicated and messy. there's a lot of shit that happens and yeah even questions where it's like who initiated the divorce it's like that doesn't even tell you anything one anybody can be a petitioner divorce it doesn't matter and two like what if i get divorced from my wife because i hate her and the reason why i hate her is because she's all over the bedroom like whose fault is that is it mine for divorcing or her for all over the bedroom? yeah <laughs> or what if she shits all over the bedroom because i because i hate her and i poison her food well now whose fault is it right <laughs> and what if you know what if i poison her food because she you know poisoned my fucking dog because she didn't like seeing my dog anymore but like i'm just saying like relationships are complicated and just like one dimensional analysis of like 73 percent of divorces are in uh started by women and the reason why is because they hate men and they're trying to upgrade to chads and hypergamy it's like bro what the uh, well a lot of times is you did they just take the positives and remove the negatives like even the trad wife thing the amount of guys that are just like oh that'd be sick i'm like yeah if you work 30 hours a week and you just have like non-stop time if you're a busy as Dude, the last thing you want is a girl who does nothing but like want you around. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. And none of these guys, like Ben Shapiro is probably like the only guy I know of, I think, that leads by a pretty strong example. And that like he seems to have a really positive relationship. He speaks really highly of his wife. She seems to help him a lot with things. And they've like met. Yeah, he's a very a conservative time. personality. Yeah, and he seems like he has a healthy relationship. Yeah. Although he doesn't even talk relationships or push that as much as like everybody else. But everybody else in the scene, yeah, has like crazy going on with their relationship well there is the on aggregates like if you are saying like hey you're better off the same i mean you've talked about like this in terms of college right mm -hmm. where it, it's like there's a lot of people that would say you know college is kind of a scam now and there's probably a, some truth to like spending a hundred grand on like a ba is a ripoff yeah you know the same out of state school you're a poor kid and you like on uh, some yeah. bullshit you know, and mm -hmm. some people, it is true that some people probably come out of college, like, st almost stupider if you go for the wrong thing. Sure. But if you don't really know what you're doing, that might be a better pathway, right? So mm -hmm. just the same thing. I think that conversation happens with, like, marriage and all this sort of things. Like, yes, the less, like, alternative lives are better if you can handle that. If you're just, like, a normal person, like, Ben Shapiro's advice is probably more likely to lead to the better path. The same way that saying, hey, you're probably better off to take a normal job than be comedian you know what i mean sure. yeah for sure but you need to be like yeah i need to make that struggle so i think and i that know that and you're just like yeah mm -hmm. i know that and i'm just still doing this just yes, be realistic about what you're telling people 